I'm Maya. I've traveled all over the world and even worked as a circus clown. I'm going to show you some exciting places and fun things to do on your next trip. I'm Katrina. I've gone from home cook to master chef. Travel and food go together like peanut butter and jelly. I'll give you the dish on food that defines us as we make cherished memories. Hey Maya! Hey, what's up Katrina? Where are we going today? We're going to the Venice of the Midwest. What? Yeah. <laughs> Where is that? That's Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Who says that? I do. <laughs> You're insane. But it sounds like a good time. Yeah. Well, let's pull over and plan our trip, shall we? Yeah, I'd love okay. that. What are we going to do? Let's plan our trip. Awesome. They recommend under food and drink to go to Lulu Cafe and Bar. Fabulous. Perfect. And look here, an urban farm, people power produce. Farm to table, Maya. You're really pulling at my heartstrings. And you know you can't go to Milwaukee and not go down the Milwaukee River. Oh, that sounds like a fun idea. Look at this, we can go on duffy boats. Ooh, and we've got to check out Lakefront Brewery. Oh, I'm thirsty now. Hey, I have a great idea for a snack. We're going to go to the Wisconsin Cheese Mart. This sounds perfect. This idea's really coming together. Good morning, hey. folks. Hey. hey! How you doing? Hi, Francis. I'm Katrina. Nice yeah. to meet you. Hey, welcome to People Power Produce. I see you brought your harvest basket. Yeah. Should we go pick some food? I'd love that. Cool. Do it. That's good. <laughs> Great. So what brings you guys here today? Well, uh, Maya and I are touring around, and we okay. decided to come to Milwaukee, and we're looking for produce. So I would love to see what you have here and what I could use today when I, I cook. Awesome, yeah, well, we love having chefs here. But as you know, with the onset of COVID, uh, basically all the restaurants are shut down or transitioning. And so we transitioned with a couple of restaurants to basically supporting people most in need during this time. So we're, uh, we basically grow 4,000 pounds of food for the year and donated all of it. So everything you see here is uh, all for donation gardening. Can't change the situation, but you can change your reaction. Learning to take hits as gifts. Huh. We'd love to see what you have to offer. I know you've got some kale. Yep. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, should Let's we do, do this? Let's do it. Let's pick some food. Okay, great. Okay. Great, follow me. Sweet. Awesome. First stop on the way here is bone knit. It's used by natives to uh, dress fresh wounds. It's also smokable. Yeah, I feel like I smoked that in my yeah, 20s. Okay, Francis, what do you have here? And this is a red winter boar kale. Oh, these are gorgeous. Check out the color on these. Yeah, I really love the reds and the purples. So oh. we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna grab all the biggest leaves. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the season here, we can just pretty much feel free to take whatever looks tasty. So we're getting to cold nights here, so we're actually probably gonna start seeing more color in the kale. You can kind of see this one is like starting to go green. Yeah, people eat with their eyes, so for the having variation of different types of kale is really awesome to have because <laughs> you want to have a pop of color in a plate. Sweet, okay, let's see what we can get out of here. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we can just pick the biggest leaves, yep. correct? And then we're also working bottom to top because those bottom leaves tend to be a little bit more developed and on their way to becoming woody and bitter. And True, great. God, it's beautiful, Francis. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> well, it's all the love you put in it, right, yeah, Francis? I, yeah, I think so. I, I can feel it. I, I mean, I can know. hear your mission and what you're saying about the love of producing and growing, which is awesome. Yeah. So the really, the most beautiful part about this is that that effort shines through in the food. True. So you, you taste a piece of kale or you taste something that's made that way and it actually does taste better. Yeah. You know, if it looks better, if it came from a place that people spent time babying each plant, yeah. it's gonna taste better. Yeah. And I think that's the ultimate like thumbs up 
from the universe to what we're doing is basically like, oh, hey, and your food tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. I'm a starving Marvin. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all for the love. I, I appreciate you guys coming down and giving yeah. us your time, and uh, hopefully we've inspired you a little bit. Yeah, really cool. Thank you for so having awesome. us. And, um, you guys are welcome anytime. Thank, thank you. you so much. Hopefully we'll really get you out here truly. to pick some weeds sometime. Damn okay, straight. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're traveling through Wisconsin and we came across this amazing place that's serving up the community right. This is Lou Cafe and Bar. <laughs> hey! Hi! Hey. 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 Welcome to Lulu! <laughs> Should we go sit down? Yeah! Sure. Let's do it. All right, let's go! <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Tell us about Lulu. We really wanted to open something that featured fresh food, prepared daily from scratch. I mean, the minute we opened the doors, we were just busy. I've just been kind of going strong since then and until about last March. <laughs> How has your format and your structure and model changed? Oh, it's, gosh, initially it was just chaos. First and foremost, our concern was for our employees and our customers. It's like, if we're gonna do this, we have to do it in the safest way possible. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth taking the chance. True. But yeah, we just started doing the curbside pickup and the carry out and we started up then contactless delivery a few weeks later. So talk about the menu just a bit. We have these pita sandwiches that I love. That's one of my personal favorites are the pita sandwiches. We have really amazing burgers. Uh, we get rave reviews on the burgers all the time. Yeah. The pizzas have been selling great since we started uh, that new style of pizza. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, our emphasis is on fresh scratch cooking. So, uh, like you mentioned, we do all of our own stocks. Yeah. Sauces for the sandwiches are made in house. And talk about a little bit what uh, we're going to be making today. I know we're going to yeah. be meeting Sarah and then um, mm -hmm. making a soup, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you and Sarah are going to be making one of our favorite soups, which is country French pork and cabbage poke tea, yeah. which three kinds of pork. Yeah, yeah. Can't beat that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's absolutely hands down one of my favorite soups. It's so hearty and delicious and porky. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Chef Sarah. Hey, how are you? Good. We just yeah. came from an urban farm just a little bit down from you, and we brought oh. you some beautiful kale. Yeah. And, and we thought we would put something and make something today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to make what is called a French country pork poti. OK. Three different kinds of pork, onions, Great. cabbage, kale. And then it's got this, it's got some rosemary in it, some thyme for the bouquet garni. What did you say? So a bouquet garni is an aromatic little purse. Usually it's tied up because then the pieces don't go all in your soup. But it's just for aromatics. It's in order to flavor the broth, and you want like a nice light kind of flavoring without overpowering the soup itself. It looks like you have some yeah. bratwurst. And tell me about your pancetta, it's beautiful. So this is pancetta, and pancetta is basically bacon that is unsmoked. That's awesome, it looks like a cinnamon roll. It's nice and swirled. Can you tell us about the process? <laughs> um, the process is basically it's pork belly that's kind of laid flat, cured, with a bunch of herbs and stuff. Oh my gosh. And then you wash all that off and you roll it up and you bind yep. it. Hey. Awesome, tell us about this then. That is a uh, pork butt. It's good for braising. So when you say pork butt, do you mean pork booty? Kind of, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of, it's the backside of the pork, yeah. And what about this? This is wine. This is a dry <laughs> white wine. And yeah. In this case, it's deglazed with wine. Otherwise, you just have a glass on the side that you just drink. So you when just you're drink from. Tell me what deglaze means. I don't fully understand what so that means. So when you it, you're kind of like taking the caramelization off the pan and putting it back into the dish. Tell us about this. That's actually the fat that I rendered when I cooked this off. So the bacon fat will then saute this. Go you're using you're using the bacon fat because that's where it comes from. Instead of using oil or butter, right. let's use the same ingredients and you're building flavor. And Yep. Each step, and that's the best thing about a soup. Well, um, you wanna you wanna do some chopping today? I'm happy sure. to get dirty in the kitchen. I'm really excited. Do you wanna head in the kitchen and start yeah. cooking a bit? Yeah, giddy up. Okay, All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Perfect. That looks beautiful already. Yeah. The pork butt which is really shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so pork butt is the shoulder? 
Yes, it is. Oh I my know. gosh, how funny is that? Sometimes you just have to let it be. You want that caramelization. That's where the flavor comes from. So we're gonna take this out. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the, the rendered pork fat back in here. Then we're going to add garlic, onions, and we have a little bit more onions over there that we're gonna add in. And you can already tell, Maya, from the pan, it's lifting up that fond already, even yep. without deglazing it. So as you can see, we've got caramelization here. All of the onions and the garlic are ready, and they're beautiful, and it smells delicious. So now we're gonna deglaze. We want all of that stuff off with some white wine. See how there was fond on the bottom of the pan? What you want to do is come in here and basically scrape all that flavor. That's where it's going to really give the soup more flavor, more complex flavor because of the meat. So next, we're going to throw in our bouquet garni. And we're going to just tie it around the edge. So now you can see it's coming to a boil. We're going to add our stock. And then we're going to let this cook for about an hour and a half. We're going to add the meats back in. And all the juices. Like, look at all the juices. That's the, oh, yeah. You don't ever want to get rid of that pork and chicken stock. So this has been cooking for about an hour and a half. It's kind of rolling a rolling boil that's just kind of cooking all those meats and all those flavors are coming together. And so the last thing we're gonna do is add our kale and it's just gonna kind of wilt. So basically we have our finished product which is a country French pork poutine. Mmm, mmm. Porky goodness. Mmm. Sarah, that's delicious. We did good. We did good. Yeah, wow. we did. Well, thank you, Sarah. Uh, this has been a pleasure for us. Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for coming and visiting me, and thanks yeah. for bringing the kale. And yeah. Anytime thank you guys want to come cook, come on over. Good. We'd that's love awesome. that. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> We're on the phone. <laughs> I know, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous day. This is so lovely. It's like paradise, isn't it? It's yeah. a Midwestern paradise. <laughs> so tell me what you brought today for us. Smoked salmon dip. I have provided some crackers and wonderful grapes, and then uh, aged Wisconsin white cheddar. Oh my god. Yeah. I've been dying to try the cheese here. So all you do is take a little knife, and you smear it right on top. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. Is that for me? Yeah, that's for Thank you. Thank you. You ready for this? Yeah. I'm so excited. OK, here we go. OK. Mm. <laughs> mm. You get a little bit of smoke from the salmon, right? It's lemony. Yeah. It's smoky. Mm -hmm. It's lemony. It has that citrus, like, that pop. Yeah. It's like a ping. It's a party in your mouth. <laughs> it's like we're on a party boat. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. You know what would really be good with? Beer. Yes. <laughs> of course, we're in Milwaukee, the home of beer. So a lot of people think that it was the German immigrants who originally brought over a lot of their styles of beer. Yeah. Which, and they did. They totally did. But it was actually the Welsh who started the very first brewery in Milwaukee. Really? I really love like craft brewery and I hear that there's a lot of influence here and craft breweries are popping up everywhere, which is really great for Milwaukee. Well, we're on our way to Lakefront Brewery. Really? Lakefront Brewery is a microbrewery here on the Milwaukee River. Oh, so do they have curbside pickup? They do have curbside pickup. They, they have a little chalet so you can boat up and they'll do curbside to your boat. So we'll be picking up some beer there that we can take with us on our trip. See what I told you? It's the Venice of the Midwest. You've got docks everywhere. Docks, docks, docks. Look at them. Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. I see that there's like a river walk. Oh yeah, there's a river walk. You can walk up and down the river. We're gonna stop at the Wisconsin Cheese Mart today. What do you think you're gonna make for us later in the RV. Something that's so truly Wisconsin, you didn't even know what hit you. <laughs> <laughs> this awesome appetizer. Okay. And it's fried cheese curds. Oh my God. <laughs> I am a happy cheese curd right now. <laughs> now. We're gonna be picking up the beer for the curds for later tonight. So tell me about what kind of beer you're interested in getting for this recipe and what style you think is perfect for it. I mean, I would say a lager, like nothing with a lot of 
hops, something that will not mask the flavor of the cheese. It's a beer batter. So meaning, you know, I don't want a dark stout to turn it color. I want this cheese to sing. I want the cheese to sing too. <laughs> Singing cheese is my favorite cheese. <laughs> I'm a little cheddar ball, cheddar ball, cheddar ball. <laughs> cheese <curd. laughs> That's my cheese curd song. Obviously. So how about this? I come up with a cocktail that pairs with the cheese curds. How about that? I would love that. When I think of Wisconsin, I think of the old fashioned cocktail. Oh. What do you think about that? It's one of my favorites. Okay, cool. We'll do an old fashioned brandy sweet. So right behind us, you can see Lakefront Brewery. See those yellow tents? Oh yeah. That's where we're headed. We're gonna pick up the beer at the chalet for the curd. Make sure that if you're drinking, you have a designated driver who's not drinking. Oh, that is so smart. Yeah. So now that we're here, we're going to order our beer curbside or dockside ah! using their Lakefront Brewery website. Look at Maya. They have a Lakefront lager. I think that will pair perfectly with the cheese skirts I'm going to make for you tonight. Well, I'm going to go gluten free today and I'm going to try their new grist goza with lime. Oh, how great. <laughs> here we go. Oh my God, let's get some beer. How cool. It's so yeah. cool. You know, one thing that I really love to do is cook, but I also like to drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this chalet is adorable. Oh, I already yeah. love how convenient it is. Look how cute this is. Hi there! Hi, how how are, are, you? are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. What can I grab for you? I would love to try your gluten-free new grist goza with lime. Excellent, please. excellent. Awesome. So it sounds like it's got a little margarita flavor yeah, action yeah. happening. Very similar, but with that beautiful beer notes to it as well. Awesome, thank yeah, you so yeah. much. And then what can I grab for you? Can I have the lakefront lager, please? The lager, very good. Light in body, but lots of flavor. Ooh, That's awesome. You wanna go sit down by the river? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful, Katrina? So beautiful. I and love it. It's a beautiful day. I know, so we're also gonna get a crowler of our lager. So instead of a growler, which comes in glass, it's a crowler, which comes in a can. Oh my gosh, I let's get this party started. Let's do it. <laughs> Look, it's a curd wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, fried cheese carrots are from Wisconsin. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Here's your lakefront crowler to go. Thank Enjoy. you so much. Thanks we for coming. Will. Thank you again. You're welcome. Cheese curds, Katrina. Ooh. So cheese curds are basically you take milk, you take some bacteria and rennet, and you add it. And basically you have a press and you press it down and it separates the liquid and the whey. And then whatever is left over is the curd. So you have a solid and some milky whey. And then what that solid milky is. Milky whey, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what those solids are, are actually cheese curds. And the oh. best thing about cheese curds are the time that you get them. We always hear about fresh cheese curds. The reason why is they squeak in your mouth. They do not. Yeah, it's like you're a little mouse eating a little cheese and they squeak. And sometimes they're even warm. Really? Correct. You mean that's how fresh it is that it's still warm from the processing? Yes, from the cheese plants. And then what I do is I roll them in flour. Okay. And I make a batter. Get a hot pan in and we'll fry them to a golden crisp, top them a little bit with salt, and pop them in your mouth. What's your secret tip for your recipe? <laughs> My secret tip is to freeze the cheese curds. Is to freeze them? Yeah, because if you put, let's just say, room temperature cheese in a vat of oil, okay, the cheese is gonna dissipate. It's gonna run everywhere. So what I do is I flour them, roll them in batter, and I freeze them. Oh my God, that sounds delicious. Yeah. We're approaching the Wisconsin Cheese Mart now. Oh. So we're gonna jump off the boat and grab our curd.
that has Chardonnay in it. I think that would be kind of fun, be great on like a cheese platter with some fruit and vegetables. That sounds really good. Yeah. Aren't they cute? They're like little Wisconsin you can take home. Maya, they got cheese curds. That looks awesome. Oh yeah, they do. That looks so good. They've got so many different kinds. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> Look at it. Check it out, Lakefront Brewery. Coffee stout, made with organic coffee stout. How cool. Let's put that in. I kind of like this huge cheese wheel. Oh, wow. You want to pick it up? It's the size of my head. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> cheese head, you're yeah. right. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. That's really cute. Look at the fireman's hats. The sombrero. Oh my god, the baseball caps, the top hat. Oh, that's cool. Look at cute. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're making my cocktail real strong. I'll make it strong for you. They look great, mine. I need a, I need a bartender. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, eh? We all need our personal hair and makeup artist and a personal bartender, don't we? <laughs> Wisconsin style. You let me know if you want me to bring over the curds. Sure, I'm almost ready with these drinks. Awesome. Yes. That looks great. Yeah. Look it's beautiful out here. Yeah. Look at this Lake Michigan. That looks so good. Thanks. I love it so much. Cheers. <laughs> you want to try a cheese curd? Yes, I do. Mm. I can't wait to dive in. That is to die for. They are really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, isn't it great? Just a little bit of flaky salt. You don't need to cover it all in salt. I just like it. It's a better course of salt. Oh, my god. These are so good. Maya, this has been a trip. It's been awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good drink, good food, great conversation. Cheers to you, Maya. Cheers and to, to you, Katrina. A wonderful city of Milwaukee. And I can't wait to come back. <laughs> <laughs> where are we going to go next? I don't know. Let's see where the road takes us. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin offers up a hometown feel with a larger than life experience. From unique farm to table dining to laid back boat rides with some of the best beer and cheese in the Midwest. Are you rolling? Yeah. Oh, nice. Thanks. But it was actually the, the wealth, the, but it was actually the wealth Right? The but it was the Welsh. Welsh. Who started the... I know that's a hard word. <laughs> it is a hard word. I would love to try. Um. Um. Oh, start over. I gotta start over. I. That was embarrassing. Um. I forgot what I said was last week. Give me a sec. Curd, 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 curd. <laughs> No! No! Keep it open! <laughs> All right. That's so good. You're this, such a smooth driver. This is a beast, man. Color here. Yeah. And more. Oh. Holy guacamole. Still rolling, right. I think. <laughs> and action. <laughs> 